Now the problem is the drug he used has been in use for 40 years for another problem. It can't be patented. The drug companies won't spend the $5 million to uh, <clears throat> get the drug approved. So he's having barn dances out there in Alberta and bake sales and things like that. And they are gradually getting, they've got a million and a half. Of course, the federal government and the Alberta government picked in half a million total. So we have hopes for something like that to come along. There are some other things that are out there and have been for years. I tried them with Michael a little bit, but he didn't want to go on a strict vegetarian or vegan diet, which apparently works for some people. We tried a little bit of Essiac, a herbal <coughs> compound from the Ojibwe Indians in Northern Ontario. And some people say it works. Uh, Sir Frederick Banting allowed one of his patients who had cancer and diabetes to try it, and that patient was cured of both cancer and diabetes. So there are rays of light out there. We hope that one day we will be rid of this scourge of cancer. Right now it's estimated that one person in six has <coughs> cancer cells in their body that might lead to problems. And it's estimated in 10 years it'll be one in three. Why? We don't know. Is it the environment? Is it pollution? Is it fluoride in the water? No one knows. Some people even say it's mercury in your teeth and say to people, get all your teeth out and gum it. <laughs> <laughs> Michael was, cancer, was diagnosed with prostate cancer about five years ago. Before that, his PSA, the prostate-specific antigen that is an indicator of the level of cancer in your body, started to rise. Four is sort of a less than four, you're probably okay. His went up, four, eight, twelve. They did biopsies, two or three of them every six months or so, and couldn't find any cancer in his prostate. Finally, they found it. And he was told that he had cancer by a second-year medical student down at St. Mike's. Not quite the best way to learn. Anyway, we tried various things. The first thing they tell you to do is watchful waiting. Just See if it's one of those slow-growing ones that you'll die of old age before it gets you. Well, it kept going up. We tried hormone treatments that are supposed to slow it down. It kept going up. We tried 41 sessions down at Princess Margaret of radiation. Going five days a week down there, he and I, and him getting under the x-ray machine, all that sort of thing. Hey, it worked. The PSA went from 75 down to 0 0.2. We celebrated. But six months later, up it started again and again. We tried chemotherapy, which really wrecks your body. First session, he survived, and hey, he kept most of his hair. Second session, it was really hard on him. At the end of that second session, back in the spring, he said to the doctor, you know, will I see Labor Day? The doctor said, well, you've got about six months. That was a prediction that we hoped wouldn't come true, but it did. I've done a lot of reading on prostate cancer, and if you are <coughs> affected with any cancer, I'd say try some of the alternate treatments, at least investigate them. That is a very recent book by Susan Summers on doctors who are actually curing prostate cancer. And it's an eye-opener to read that. 
On the internet, there is something called Cancer Tutor, which is, seems to be thousands of pages on possible cancer cures. <coughs> if you know anyone with cancer, <coughs> have them check that out and see if there's anything that might work for them. Doesn't work for everyone, all these things, but they do work sometimes for some people. Anyway, enough on the disease. It's with us and we hope it gets cured eventually. Now Michael and I had a wonderful life together. We met about almost 30 years ago and we clicked. We both had the same cameras. <laughs> and Minolta. We could trade lenses around. <clears throat> we had a mutual friend a Dr. Dale McCarthy, who was a real friend to us. He had us out to parties at his place and all that sort of thing, and we got to know some of his friends. We met at our apartments. We had two apartments, and I met his parents. He met some of my friends. I met a lot of his friends, especially Terry, who was Still a student at that time. Of course, he's always still learning. He's back learning how to write novels. <laughs> we went to Montreal together and met his family there. Lived at 400 Beatty for a week. Charlie said sorry. Charlie is one of his brothers who has the family house, but he's uh, ill right now. He came up to Owen Sound lots of times. He helped me with my open water scuba classes, helped keep records for that. He liked going out on the boat. He did ride around on the back of the motorcycle a little bit, but he really didn't like that too much. <laughs> Mike cheered me on in 1985 when I competed in the Masters uh, games here in Toronto. I came seventh and he was there to applaud me, seventh in swimming. After a couple of years we were living in two separate apartments visiting back and forth and he had a good suggestion. Why don't we buy a house together? So he went out and started scouring for houses. I said, yeah, I can afford, oh, 100, 150, 125,000. We ended up spending almost 200,000 for our house on Markham Street. Now, some of you may have been there. It was a duplex, so the rent from downstairs paid for uh, a lot of the expenses, but it was upstairs and our unit 